Yes, it would surprise some of you younger viewers, if there are any in this channel, from my analytics, it, it seems that it's all just a bunch of early Gen Z and millennial dudes. Uh, but yeah, there was a time where Bluetooth earphones aren't just AirPods or true wireless stuff. You have things like uh, this One More IB3, which are just some earphones with wires connecting them together, along with a control clump containing the Bluetooth electronics and probably the battery, or maybe it's still on the, the earpieces itself. And then there's another form, which is the neck band. These things had a band that sat on your neck. You know, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and the IMs would just hang from them, or they'd have like a retractable mechanism, like the LG Tone series. Well, today I'm taking a look at one of those neck bands from Sony. It's from their extra bass line of Bluetooth earphones. It's not just extra bass, it's extra bass. Alright, no, no more dilly-dallying, let's get to review of the Sony MDR XB70BT. If there's anything Sony has stuck to doing, it, it's making super convoluted names. Alright, let's get started. If you've ever seen a Sony box before, you'll be accustomed to the typical Sony printing. You know, renderings of the product in the front, some, you know, some text, uh, some list of accessories on the side, and in the back, it's, you know, it's a bunch of marketing and specs. It looks nice if, I guess, just a little cluttered, I'd say. Opening this uh, box in the bottom, and you slide this out. You have this black inner box, and it seems to be using a decently thick cardboard with like uh, air pockets in between the layers, if you can see that. So it does feel a bit more substantial than the usual inner boxes for sure. I like this. Opening the top flap, you'll see the XB70BT neatly assembled in a styrofoam type insert. Or at least it's my best attempt at trying to repack this thing. It's kind of a bit convoluted. But you know, there's some even like you can see that there's a U-shaped foam pad just to like uh, support the earphones. So that's pretty cool. Some very caring packaging by Sony here. And then when you take that out, what you see below is a clear bag which uh, contains all of the instruction manuals as well as the accessories. So you get this uh, pretty standard looking uh, micro USB cable. Uh, you know, I guess it works, whatever. It's This is an old product, not that old, but I guess enough that it's still going to be running on uh, micro USB, so just mind that. Of course, you will be getting uh, a pack of Sony hybrid ear tips, which come in uh, super extra small to large sizes, uh, with the mediums pre-installed. You know, it's a pretty standard affair, except that they are in a uh, translucent blue colorway instead of the usual opaque black with colored stems that you often see in uh, standard Sony hybrid tips. And now comes the instruction manuals. So first you get this one, which uh, it's, it, yeah, it's the fold-out style and this thing is big. Oh yeah, let me just uh, flip it out. It's kind of hard to flip out too, which is why I don't necessarily like this type, but... Oh boy. It's essentially gonna be your... Uh, you know, it's just a lot of text about standard stuff, reference guides, and some uh, legalese as usual with these Bluetooth thingies. Just leave that to the side. Uh, and now this one, this one is really nice. I really like that Sony often includes uh, like illustrations with their manuals. And for this XB70BT, they have a whole like 
dedicated pamphlet just for uh, letting you like showing you everything about the features and like taking calls and pairing and how the LEDs work all of that like there's just a lot of uh, pictorial guides here and I really like this I hope that other Bluetooth earphone makers will also do something like this visual aids are much better for the consumer to learn about the operation of the product this is such a nice and intuitive way of conveying instructions. I really like this. And here is the Sony XB70BT. As you can see, it is a uh, neckband form factor, but probably one of the worst off examples of this form factor. You've got uh, the band part itself, which is made of this rubber silicone material. It feels decently substantial and durable but uh, I wouldn't risk cutting these with a pair of scissors. And then you have these uh, two clumps here, which stores all of the electronics as well as the batteries inside. On this right side, this is just the battery clump and uh, yeah, it's got a red uh, right side indicator. And on this outside part, you can also see an NFC section which allows you to do quick pairing through NFC though it's a little fiddly getting it to work on the left side will be your uh, controls here you can see the power button which uh, doubles as a play pause as well as volume up and down buttons which are all of these are embossed and these serve uh, as well as for track skipping purposes when you hold them down in the middle of this clump, let me just turn it on, you will see a little uh, flashing LED and it flashes blue when using uh, the, eye, uh, the, the, the earphones. It will flash blue periodically. It stays red when charging and turns off when it's full. This is also, there's also a hole here for the microphone to the side which yeah we'll get to that later uh, although the controls here are embossed it's in practice it, it feels you know it's not really that great it's still quite hard to identify the controls by feel since the buttons are so small and because it's on your neck it doesn't you know you don't have direct line of sight with them so you're just gonna be like fiddling with it also on this clump is gonna be a flap which opens out to reveal the micro USB port. Again, you know, when the XB70BT was released, USB-C was already starting to be adopted by many brands, but uh, it wasn't ubiquitous yet. And so not having it here is uh, understandable, if a bit of a pity. And then you have uh, these wires that lead up to the earphone housings themselves. There is no like retractable mechanism, so the wires just hang on your neck. Sony does include this, uh, if you can see this cable joiner. Uh, so you just slot the cables in like this and there you go. It tidies it up a little bit, but the thing is, this joiner, it just would not hold. And a lot of times the wires would just separate. They have a pretty uh, let's go to the housings, okay? The, they have a pretty standard shape. It's a down to ear design with uh, angled nozzles. Now, if you wear a collar sleeve shirt, you can actually sort of hide this band under the collars a little. And in the ear, the XB70BT is a decently comfy wearing experience. The band itself is a little hefty, but it won't be anything too noticeable. There's quite a few bad things though. Uh, first, if you haven't seen it in the B-roll, the XB70BT parts are coated with this soft touch coating, which over the years, as you can see, has been scratched and degraded due to rubber reversion. And it's now like an icky, gooey mess of primordial ooze that looks stained and ugly. Uh, secondly, 
the housing of the earphones, as you can see, it has this sort of rubber cover on it. And uh, over the years, this rubber bit, it's gonna become brittle and it just chips and breaks away. Oh, it, and it's also got rubber version, so oh, it's also a bit icky. And it leaves you with this small bit of plastic, which is gonna be the actual housing, which is a lot smaller. Uh, and this this part that breaks off, this is a common failure point for the XB70BT. And although it doesn't uh, affect your usage, it's not exactly great for it to be like this. It doesn't look nice. Uh, Sony just did not make this thing to last. And the third thing is, okay, so look at this nozzle. Yeah. There is just no cover of any kind, not any metal grills, nor is there any foam inside. There was no attempt at covering this up. I would not think this is wise given that dust, eel wax, or maybe some moisture can get inside the driver like this. I don't know why Sony did this, but this is how they did it. Since the XB70BT is an older set, it is using Bluetooth 4.1 instead of the later 5.0 or 5.2 protocols. Though pairing is standard for Bluetooth headsets, you know, you just find it in the list on your phone, you press pair, voila. Uh, but there's also the pairing through the NFC tag feature, though I find it to be kind of cumbersome. It works, and it works well, but it, it's not really faster or any more convenient than, than just, you know, finding it and pairing it the normal way, for me at least. The XB70BT also has both voice prompts and sound cues to indicate actions with the headset. You will hear a short sound and a lady saying, Power on. When turning it on. As well as, Bluetooth connected. When, you know, the phone is successfully paired with the set, or power off when you know it's powering off and disconnecting. Well, uh, and of course, all the interactions with the headsets will have other sound cues and stuff. The lady in here sounds very professional, and her English accent seems on point, unlike the more bubbly Mitsuki Yuki voice lines in the uh, Moo Drop Neko Cake or the crusty and like heavily accented woman in the KZZ1 True Wallace. Now usually you just go for a voice prompt or sound cues in your Bluetooth product, but hey, Sony gives you both. The XB70BT also advertises a 9 hour playback, and I had gone on a day trip with this thing, on and off, with the music playing on and off, since morning till like 5 p.m. So it probably meets those battery measurements if maybe a little less so. The charge time is kinda slow though, coming in at roughly two and a half hours so it's really not as nippy as the modern True Wireless offerings. Otherwise, the XB70BT really doesn't do much else than play music. Since the play boss button's uh, press and hold control is for turning it on and off, you don't seem to be able to summon the assistant on your phone either. There's no active noise cancelling features and other stuff too, nor is there a transparency mode. Just playing music. Uh, I, I can't expect this thing to do more than that I guess. It did come from a time where features like that would have probably costed you a much higher premium. And despite the sporty look, no, the XB70BT is not rated for any kind of IP rating. It's unlikely that you'll kill this thing with a few drops of water, but yeah, no IP rating, so maybe you can use it at the gym, but probably not in the rain. Again, another missed opportunity for this XB70BT. And for codec support, the XB70BT is yet another poor showing. It only supports AAC and SBC. 
this was back when uh, Sony gatekeeped their LDAC codec. So the best you're getting here is AAC, I'm afraid. So as you can see, the XB70BT has quite a few demerits and it, it's just lacking a lot of stuff that you would see come standard on modern Bluetooth offerings. Well, hello everyone, this is Lumerion, the Lumerion that's editing right now. And I have noticed that the Lumerion you're seeing on the screen has once again forgotten to do the delay test for the XB70BT. So I'm here to fill in for him. Uh, basically, the XB70BT gets delays from anywhere from uh, 330 milliseconds to like 450 milliseconds. So really not impressive and quite delayed. I would not trust this thing for gaming, but of course, as I always say, if you're trying to game on true wireless, you might as well give up and just buy something wired. The microphone of the Sony MDR XB70BT is in line with other Bluetooth headsets. It's low fidelity and it kind of muffles my voice and also making it a little hollow sounding. It will do for a basic phone call or Zoom meeting, but don't expect it to do much more than that. Okay, so for the listening prerequisites, uh, since there's no like updatable firmware on the XB70BT, and I don't think this thing has any kind of companion app either, there's really nothing else that needs to be done except uh, just connect the thing to the phone and start playing music. For ear tips, I'll be using these uh, SpinFit CP145s since the XB70BT sound doesn't really change much with uh, tip rolling and these SpinFits are decently comfortable so yeah I'm just gonna use these. Otherwise, the Sony hybrids that came with them are very comfortable too. So if you don't have the SpinFits then these hybrids are just as good to be honest so you can use them interchangeably if you want all right so with all that out of the way let's get into the sound of the sony mdr xp 70 bt <sighs> such a mouthful of a name yeesh so the sound of the xp 70 bt is advertised well it's as 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 advertised it's Extra bass. You know, says it right in the front of the package. Well, the thing is, Sony just forgot to say that that's really all this thing has going for it. it it's just all bass, and everything else is just kind of neglected. Okay? So let's talk about this bass. You know, well, the XV70BT has extra bass. Need I say more? Well, actually, if there is, if there is more to say about it, you should take this extra bass not in the sense that you need more bass and this Sony set fulfills it, but extra in the sense that it is excessive for any kind of music. The XB70BT's bass will find an excuse to worm itself into the mix and turn even light songs into something that just has a random bass hit out of nowhere and not in a good way because this is something that Sony never learns extra bass doesn't equate to good bass the bass performance here is really bad let's go over good things first it maintains a soft impact and texture and for all it's worth the bass doesn't lag behind or feel sluggish and in terms of quantity it does dole out a massive amount if you want it to. And you will want it to, because that's all it can do. The bad things here though are really bad. This bass presentation is one note. It's kind of flabby and it's also muddy. There's little to no resolution and finesse. It's either you get a strong slam, or you get flabby rumbles, or nothing at all. The bass here is very, very prevalent and will bleed into the mids for sure. 
it, it's like this it's like the central element of this sound signature and it's just not good the mid-range of the XB70BT is below average it's got a warm lower mid-range and the Tombra isn't too weird despite this like bass heavy signature however it sits far back in the stage because that bass man it keeps assaulting the mid-range's domain all the time just drowning it out and then the upper mids they don't fare much better a, a bit less distant but kind of muffled sounding and, and overly soft in texture sometimes even a little bloated the separation of these mids are pretty bad too what with the bass just dominating it and then all the details and everything in the mids just has to awkwardly like huddle itself in one small corner of the more complex compositions and then going to the treble well, well at least sony didn't fully kill the treble here or at the very least it doesn't sound completely drowned out or super sibilant However, it's also privy to some weaknesses. Particularly, its clarity leaves me wanting. It's just not really good at portraying details. Things like symbols tend to be reduced into a simple t sound. And airiness is, is like a 50-50 ordeal. On some songs, it sounds fine if a little dull. On others, it's, it's, it's kind of being drowning. You know? It, it's an extra bass set. I'm, I'm just glad the treble isn't completely destroyed, let alone be below par, I guess. Despite the bass-heavy, semi-muddy sound, the XB70BT manages to not sound super narrow for its soundstage. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not great, but it's at least average in this regard. Depending on the song, it will sound about where your ears are, or it'll be a little more focused inside of your head. Technicalities on this thing though, it's a bit of a joke. <laughs> There's a very basic amount of separation, just enough to not make it sound ultra terrible, but not much better. A lot of sounds they just tend to gel into each other, though they thankfully don't clash with each other. If only because if there if there are two competing elements in a song, one will just give up so that the other will show through. This thing's macro detail is is like disappointing already, let alone its micro detail performance. Don't expect much on the resolution side of his headset, and its dynamic range is, is also quite compressed, just to, just to add insult into injury. So between the Sony MDR XB70BT and the Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus, for the build, the Buds Plus win over the XB70BT in that it hasn't melted into a puddle of ooze due to rubber reversion, at least not yet. And I wasn't gonna do a sound comparison, but, but sure, let's give you a reference to see how bad the XB70BT sounds like. The Buds Plus bass might not be as powerful, but it's oh so much more graceful and less in your face about it. The technicalities of the Buds Plus also handily beats the XB70BT. You're getting more resolution and separation for sure. Perhaps the only thing that the XB70BT does right here is that its upper mids doesn't have this graininess in the way that the Buds Plus has. But however, this 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 victory it, it it's pyrrhic, as the Sony's upper mids just lack detail and are more muffled. There's no comparison here, the, the, the Buds Plus wins for sure. Even like the battery life, the Buds Plus lasts longer than the, the, the XB70BT despite being smaller and just being a true wireless set. So at the end of the day, Sony set out to build an extra bass Bluetooth headset. No more, no less. And you could argue that yeah, they have checked 
those tick boxes on the list. However, this, this tunnel visioning meant that the SB-70BT pretty much only had base, and everything else was just kind of left on the wayside, or was made as an afterthought. And then that base itself, it wasn't even good. So there's just not much, if nothing, to love about this product. I guess the long battery life? But you know, you, you wouldn't want to listen to this sound so much as to use it. Like auto missions of the IP ratings, some kind of codec better than AAC and SBC, as well as a rubber dependent build that does not age well. On top of that means that the XB70BT just has not withstood this, the test of time. It wasn't really great when it came out, and in 2022, it's just kind of, you know, embarrassing. It's so bad though, in fact, that I have decided that the XB70BT is gonna be the second edition to Lumerion's Hall of Shame. Please check it out over on the website as usual, uh, so that it may forever be shamed and avoided. If you just want to use this thing as it is, avoid this set. It's just not good. Please don't buy. Alright, so that is the end of yet another review. Um, as always, I will put the links to the music that I used in the description. Uh, there's also going to be links to my website to check out the Hall of Shame. Uh, as well as my Patreon link. If you want to support me, if you want to donate so that I can get more stuff in for review, if I want, if you want me to get the funds to buy stuff to actually review, then yes, that's where you can support me. Uh, shout outs to 78 Dragon, my tier 2 patron. As always, the tier 2 patrons will have access to the video scripts that I have, as well as some. Uh, extra behind the scenes footage and extra b-roll and pictures if I have some You know if you like the video like the video if you have anything to say if you have suggestions or any questions By all means participate in the comment section If you want to see more of this type of content as well as the gaming stuff I do then there you go Just subscribe to my channel. Otherwise. Yeah Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video this is Lumerion, signing off.